Okay, so for those of you who have your Bible, you can follow along. I read the verses to uh, Numbers 14. Numbers. numbers chapter 14. And just kind of a review because we were we did prayer requests and praises and stuff last week. So we need to kind of go back because this is on the tail end of that, what we talked about last. Okay. Children of Israel are at the promised land. And 12 spies go in. They look at the land. Ten of them come back and say, nope, can't do it. There's giants in the land. We're like grasshoppers. Just can't do it. Okay. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, came back and they said, oh, but we can. It's a good land. It's, it's very good. It's better than we can imagine. And we can do this. And at that point, we start chapter 14, and the people are murmuring against Moses and Aaron, and Joshua and Caleb stand up and try to make their point, and the, le the next verse is chapter, or, yeah, chapter 14, verse 10, but the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Okay? Now, I don't know who the them is, if it's just Joshua and Caleb that they're wanting to stone, or if Moses and Aaron are included in this, because that's who they were murmuring against. But either way, God's people, God's good people, are just about to get stoned. Okay? And it says, And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. My first point is right here in this first verse, and it's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. The glory of the Lord appeared. That's not to say it wasn't there the whole time. Right. Amen. Okay? God had seen this whole thing. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew what was in the people's hearts. He knew what was in Joshua and Caleb and Moses' and Aaron's heart. He knew everything that was going on. He knew what the people were about to do. He knew their motives. He knew their, you know, everything about them. And he is watching and he is listening. But nobody really realized that right then. Okay? Now, Maybe Moses. Moses was close enough with God that I'm sure he was thinking, God's watching. You know, you verse 10. Verse 10. Four, you know, that God's no, watching. 14, verse 10. Yeah, chapter 14, verse 10. But I think everybody else, especially those who were doing the stoning, oh. were not taking into account that God was watching all of this. And you'd think they'd know by now that God was watching them. Okay? God sees what's going on in our lives, even when we don't see Him. We don't see Him working. We don't see how it's going to work out. We don't see a way out. We don't see the possibilities. We don't see the open doors. You know? <laughs> God has got, he's already, the glory of the Lord appeared, but it was already there. And it's already here in our situation. Whatever our situation is, God is in it. And he's watching and he's listening. And at the right time, we say he's going to show up. And that just means, like here, up here, where we can actually see him. Okay? Not in his physical form, of course, but we can actually see him working. So be patient if you're in a situation where you don't see God working, you don't see God moving, you don't see God's way, you don't see His plan. It feels like you've been forsaken and forgotten. And when He's not talking to you? He's not, yeah, you feel like He's not even talking to you. He's like, really, God, did I do something wrong? I mean, read through the Psalms, David. I mean, just He's like, why have you forgotten me? Why have you forsaken me? Why are you mad at me? You know, He gets it. I love reading through David because I'm like, man, I get this guy. Because <laughs> I've been there, you know? I've been there. So the first thing I want to just remind you is whatever you're facing, God sees it. God knows. God cares. He hears. And he's going to take care of it in his time. In his time. So he shows up in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. I'm wondering if at that point those people had those stones already in their hand and they just, whoop, <laughs> Ooh, and they start backing away. I would. Mm -hmm. I would. All of a sudden this great congregation, you know, the tabernacle and it lights up and there's all these lights and probably thunderings and, yeah. Change I, of temperature. Uh -huh. 
I'd back away. I would back away. Now, I want to read the Lord's reaction to this, and then I want to talk about Moses' reaction, okay? The Lord, in verse 11, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? Fair question. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. How many times now has God gone through this of, I am done with these people. Mm -hmm. I am fed up. How many times do we have to go through this? How long till they believe? I mean, he said, how long till they believe? After all I've done for them, they still don't believe I can do it. Does that hit anybody else really hard? <laughs> After everything I've done for you, Dana, you don't believe I can pay this bill? You don't believe I can meet this need? You don't believe I can? Ouch, Lord. He's ready to be done with them. He's ready to destroy them. He's like, you know, let's just do this pestilence. We'll just wipe them all out. Moses, we'll start over again with you. Because you're doing right. And you're, you, you've got this met. So we'll just, we'll just start all over again with you. Okay? So that's God's reaction. Okay, he is protecting his people, and that's what God does. Amen. God protects his people. You know, sometimes that we see bad things happen to God's people. You know, we see missionaries being persecuted. We see, you know, these uh, Christians in these other countries being put to death, and we say, okay, God, you're not protecting your people. He is actually, mm -hmm. just not the way we think. Right. Okay. He is protecting them, and God here is protecting. He's saying, look. These are my people, and you don't mess with my people. Now, before I look at Moses' reaction, I want to ask you, how do you react when people hurl things at you? Insults? Criticism? You know, uh, just snarkiness? That's one that gets me. A snarky attitude, you know. Uh, Holier than that, yeah. you mean? Well, <laughs> that snarky is just kind of that, you know, it's just, I'm better than you, and I I don't have to listen to you, and you, you're so stupid, you don't know yeah. anything, right. you know, that kind of a, mm -hmm. but I mean, really, I mean, think about it, you know, they, they hurl insults, they hurl criticisms, they hurl, you know, uh, accusations, just or unjust, you know, what do they hurl at you? All kinds of things. I mean, we, we were talking about different things this morning, and I was like, okay, that goes along with the lesson, you know. When people talk bad about us, when people treat us wrong, you know, when people disrespect us, what is our response? What is our reaction? Anybody? Wanna, <laughs> anybody want to say what your reaction might be? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, mine's an acid stomach. Okay. You get sick. You get upset. What else? Fight back. Anybody else fight back? Or is that just me? <laughs> My feelings are hurt. Oh, uh, yeah. The cry and cry some more, you know. Cry while yelling at them. Cry while yelling at them. <laughs> cry while calling them names, you know. <laughs> What was it Jason and I were talking about this morning? And I said, you know, I said something about, you know, no, I didn't do that. Uh, we were talking about people, um, bicyclists on the Swamp Rabbit oh. Trail. There is a, a trail etiquette that you're mm -hmm. supposed to follow on the trail. Some do. Some do not. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, some of those bicycles are the quietest things oh, yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And somebody comes flying past you. You don't know they're coming. You don't hear them coming. All of a sudden, you see that movement, and you, you flip. And you, you, know, you just, just like, and then it takes you five minutes to get your heart calm back down. And it's like, would really? you just tell somebody like you're supposed to, passing on the left? How hard is that? But they're just in their own, you know. And Jason said, what you ought to do is carry a stick and uh -huh. stick it in their, <laughs> in their wheel. And you I said, have time. <laughs> well, that, I said, first of all, I don't know they're there you until... You the stick out of your hand. You just, oh my goodness. They'll knock me down. Yeah. 
I, I, said, I don't know. They're stick to that side, you yeah. know, uh, sticking out that way. They'll have to speak up yeah. <laughs> to get by. To get by. But I'm like, you know, and that's why I don't take my dog out anymore because they'll about run him over because mm -hmm. he just kind of, he's just doing his little wandering thing. And, you know, if somebody says passing on the left, I pull him over. But if you don't tell me you're coming, I don't know you're coming. Yeah. I can't read your mind, you know. So, well, he, you know, he said, just, you know, put the stick in there. And I said, well, I couldn't do that. I said, first of all, I don't see them coming until they're past me, you know. I said, but second of all, I'm not that mean. I said, but I have to admit, I have said some really unkind things about them as they pass. <laughs> you jerk. You, why didn't you tell me you were coming, you know. And then, of course, that's my prayer time. So I'm going, sorry, Lord. Didn't mean that, didn't mean that you know. That's our, rea our natural reaction is to be mean back, to be cruel back, to hurl things back. You know, you throw a stone at me, I throw a stone at you, you know. But is that the right reaction? I want you to look at Moses. Now remember, Moses is one of the ones that was just about to get stoned. Well, he's ready to get out anyway. <laughs> he's ready to be done with these people. He has put up with these people all this time, and they have just been problem after problem after problem. And he's asked the Lord to kill him, so he's thinking, well, maybe these people will kill me or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If we remember, the last time we saw Moses, not too long ago, he was saying, Lord, just kill me now. Don't, let me, don't make me have to put up with these people anymore. So he might be going, yeah, bring on those stones. <laughs> <You know? laughs> bring it on. But... I want you to look at his reaction. Moses is so much better person than I am. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of, that, of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by day, time, in a pillar of cloud, and a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring the people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, and we'll get to that part in just a minute. You see what he's doing? Taking up for them. He's not really taking up for them. He's taking up for God. That's true. It's not that these people deserve mercy. No. And honestly, would God be justified in destroying them at this time? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the covenant he made with them was a conditional covenant? If you will obey me, I will bring you to this land. Well, have they obeyed him? So he has no obligation to take them to the land. He would be just in doing what he does. To destroy them, start over again. He has every right. And they, I mean, really, he has every right. But Moses says, but, but wait God. See, we understand that. Because we have your law. But the Egyptians, you know, they don't have your law. They don't understand that. And the people of this land, they've heard of your fame. They've heard all about you. They've heard of what you've done, and they've heard of, you know, how. So, but they don't know about this covenant, that it's conditional. So if you were to destroy all these people, what these other people would say, these Egyptians and these inhabitants of this land, they'd say you couldn't do it. They'd say you weren't strong enough. They'd say, you weren't mighty enough. God, it's going to look bad on you, and I am protecting your reputation. Oh, there's another one. How many of us are willing to stand up for the Lord's reputation? Yeah. I was thinking this morning, I was like, you know, you can't go anywhere or watch anything without hearing the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. It is just, it's like it's just this little catchphrase, you mm -hmm. know? And by the way, OMG is still taking the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. I have heard Christians argue that. Well, no, it's not. I'm not actually saying his name. Well, you might as well be. Everybody knows what you mean. The, so the you might. G is, it stands for right. Yeah, you're, that's but because they don't actually say the word, they're not. Oh. I'm like that's the dumbest thing I've ever you're heard. You're referencing the word. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're. I'm like it's still disrespecting God. You're using his name in a flippant way to, you know, it's like. 
surprise or, you know, what we'll say surprise, you know, or say wow, or, you know, my, my thing is Jiminy Crickets. I just, that's what I say. <laughs> Jiminy Crickets, you Mine know. Is Jiminy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, find something else other than the Lord's precious name. I mean, preacher's been talking about that a couple of times recently in his messages. The disrespect for God. It's like, you know, God's my buddy and God's my friend. And yes, he is. Mm -hmm. But he is more than that. He is our God. He is our Savior. He is our King. I mean, you wouldn't go up to a, you know, the Queen of England or something and say, this is, my, this is my buddy, this is my, you know. We wouldn't do that. And we don't use her name as a cuss word. So why do we do it to God, you know? When was the last time we stood up for God and his reputation and said, you know, we need to watch out that people don't think bad of God. Mm -hmm. And that's going to come back on us in just a minute. You'll see how. <laughs> but here's what Moses said. He said, this is what the people know about you. The people here, but also the people outside. This is what they know about you. Okay? They know in verse 18, the Lord is long-suffering. That means patient. Oh, I think the Lord has definitely shown his patience. <laughs> and of great mercy. He's definitely shown mercy. Forgiving iniquity and transgression. Oh, yeah. But look at this part. And by no means clearing the guilty. Forgiving, but that does not mean there's not a punishment. He's not clearing it away like, okay, you didn't do anything. Because you did. Sin has consequences. Even forgiven sin has consequences. Look at this part. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Okay, here we go. <laughs> We're about to get ugly, ladies. <laughs> Toes are going to hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wear flip flops today. <laughs> you know better than to wear flip flops in this class. <laughs> Our sin doesn't just affect uh, us, it affects everybody around us and those who see us. And in respect of what we just said about making big of God and protecting His image, we hurt Him. And his image and his, you know, what people think of his character when we do wrong. And I'm not talking about just the big wrongs, like, you know, murder and stuff, because I don't think any of us do that. But <laughs> unless you're talking about bugs, in which case I don't think that counts. <laughs> I don't think that counts. But I'm talking about little things, too, or what we think of as little things. For example. <laughs> taking care of our temple. Uh -huh. Is it any wonder that people call the church people hypocrites? When we get up and we talk and we preach and we go against sin, but then we eat trash, we overeat, we overindulge. Are those not also sins? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, you know what, we get angry with people. You know, well, they just call us a bunch of hypocrites. Well, we need to stop acting like it. <laughs> We're being hypocrites. We're getting in their face and saying, this is wrong, and this is wrong, and you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't do this. But we're overlooking our own sins mm -hmm. and excusing them. As, well, that's not really a sin. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a sin. And it's not just affecting us. And I use this example because I, I think about health, you know. When we are not as healthy as we should be and as healthy as we could be. And I know some people have conditions that, yeah. that they can't help, you know. And, and it, but a lot of us have conditions we could <coughs> help if we would do the right things, okay. When we're not where we need to be, who does that affect? Well, it affects our family, right? Because we can't do for them and provide for them the way we should. We're not as nice to them as we should be because <laughs> we feel bad because we're cranky or whatever because we're not doing right. So it affects our family. It affects our workplace because we don't work as well. We're not as efficient. We're, we're not as focused. 
you know, and as clear-minded as we should be. We don't have the physical abilities we should have. It affects our church, you know. We're cranky with one another. We don't treat people the way we should because we don't feel good or we can't perform the way we should perform in church for whatever task we're supposed to do because we just don't feel like it because we haven't taken care of ourselves. And then, like I said, it comes back and it gets the Lord because people say, well, those Christians, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. Well, Christian means Christ-like. So if Christians are hypocrites, guess what that makes them think? Christ was a hypocrite. It's not. It doesn't stop. And see, Moses, he understood this, and he said, Lord, it goes beyond us. This is outside of us. This is about you. We want to make your name great. We want people to think highly of you. And we ought to want that too. We ought to want people to think highly of God. You know, not of us. Look at what I did. I'm so spiritual. I obeyed all the rules. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people looking at us and saying, there's something different. There's something different about that person. How does that person do that? How does that person stay motivated? How does that person do those things when it's so hard? Well, let me tell you how. And it opens up the door of opportunity. Okay? Uh, verse 19 I want to go back to something in a minute, but verse 19, Moses is still talking. He says, pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people. Forgive them. According unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Verse 20 says, and the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. There's just another example that prayer changes things. God was saying, I'm done. I'm done with these people. I'm fed up. I'm tired of this game. I am tired of their, their complaints. I am tired of their unbelief. I'm just tired of it. And Moses said, but God, think about this. Now, had God thought about that? This is God, you know? Can you imagine going to God and saying, now God, think about it this way. <laughs> like you were talking to a child almost, you know. But think about it. If you do that, that's going to make you look bad. God had thought about it. God knew. God knows all. What God, what made a difference to God was that Moses stepped forward. And it was important enough to Moses to say, I don't want people to think this about you. I don't want your name to be, you know, uh, besmirched or blemished or I don't want people to think less of you because of what we've done. And when Moses stood up and did that, God said, I'll honor that. I'm pleased with that. So I'll give you what you want. That's powerful, y'all. How powerful is prayer? That powerful? When God sees that we come to him, not for gimme, 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 gimme. Moses wasn't, the only thing Moses was getting out of this was more time with these people. <laughs> That's all he was getting at. He was not getting a great deal out of this. It wasn't about Moses. When we go to God, and yes, we can ask Him for things that we want or we need, and that, that's fine. But if all we ever do is go to Him and ask for gimme, 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 you know, God kind of gets tired of that. But when we go and we go on behalf of somebody else, Amen. and we say, God, if you will work in this situation, it will just... It will make you so powerful in the eyes of these unbelievers, in the eyes of the family of that person, in the eyes of the church of that person. It, it, it could spark a revival if you will do this thing, Lord, because I know you can. And remind God of who he is. He knows who he is, but remind him. You're merciful. You're long-suffering. You're, you know what? And God, when God sees an attitude like that, he goes, you know what? I like that. I'll honor that. The reason I think we don't get more of our prayers answered like that is because we don't go to God like that. Mm -hmm. We go with this, well, God, you know, if you want to, if you think you can, if you, you know. Nah, nah, nah. We don't go with that power that Moses had. <laughs> so we don't get the power back, you know. But the last thing I wanted to point out, if you notice when Moses was talking, he said, you know, that the, the land here, the inhabitants of this land, he said, they've heard of you. 
They've heard of your fame. They've heard of your long suffering. They've heard of your power. Moses knew what those people had heard. So I'm guessing some of the spies had actually heard what was, what was going on, okay? Because somehow he knew. But do you remember what the ten spies said when they came back? They said, we can't do it. And they said, we're as grasshoppers in our eyes and in theirs. Moses just said, no, they weren't. Mm -hmm. Moses said, those people are scared to death of us. <coughs> Not of us. Of our God. Amen. They're shaking in their boots because they've heard already of our God and they know he's coming this way. So if you knew that the enemy was already shaking in their boots, <laughs> why would you not go in and take the land? Why wouldn't you go in? Too hard. Mm -hmm. It's too hard. Why do we give up so easily? Too much effort. We give up on prayer. You know, we just uh, well, I prayed for it for three, you know, three, four days, and it just didn't happen, so I just stopped praying. Well, then don't expect it. You know? Do you remember how long Abraham had to wait for his son? Do you know how long David had to wait from the time he was actually crowned king to the time he actually was king? Joseph, he had that dream that he was going to be, you know, the ruler and his brothers were going to bow down to him. Well, that didn't happen for a long time. What if any of those three had just said, you know what, it's too hard, I give up. It's, I've waited. I, I waited a year. I waited two years. I waited ten years. I gave up. It's too long. How long is Moses? We wouldn't have the book of Psalms, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what in the world? And what if Moses, she, I mean, she said it too. What if Moses had said to you, you know what, God, you want to do them? Well, do away with them? Do away with them. What would we be missing? What would they have missed? Why do we give up when things get hard? When we know that the enemy is shaking in his boots. It may not seem like it, but we know according to this word, he is. When we get up and we have that attitude of prayer, that power in prayer, when we get up and we say, God, it's all about you. When we get up like that and we start our day like that, it's got Satan going, you know, I better not mess with her today. Amen. However, when we get up and I'm going to conquer the day today and it's I've got to do this and it's all about me and you know, I'm and it's me, 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 me. Satan says, yes. Easy prey. Mm -hmm. Easy prey. We set ourselves up for failure just like they did. They could have easily conquered the land, but they already had it in their mind, well, we just can't win. Well, let's get in our mind. We can. In fact, the Bible says we already have. We are overcomers, not we will be. This is we are. We are overcomers. Just take it. Take it. Get up in that power. Have that power of prayer. Have that attitude every day that God, whatever I do today, everything I do today is all about making you big. Amen. Not that he's not already big. We don't make him big. But we make him big in the eyes of everybody else. Including ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes we need Amen. to we yeah. need to remind ourselves how big God is. And for my blog, I'm going through a series, and I've got to finish up. But I'm going through a series right now of titles of God in the book of Psalms. And the reason I did that is because I was like, you know what, God, sometimes I go through and I read these titles and I say, you know, you're my, you're my fortress and you're my buckler and you're the horn of my salvation and you're this and you're that. I'm like, but what does that really mean? Yeah. What does it really mean? Do I really know you or did, do I just have these terms that I call you? That's good. And let me tell you, I've been getting into some of the, some of these words, it's like, well, that's an easy word. Everybody knows what that means. But I have gotten in there and it does not mean what I thought it meant. Oh, cool. It does not. Like fortress. Fortress actually has a couple of different meanings and it's like, whoa, that is so awesome. So I have been getting in there and then each day that's been part of my prayer is just to spend five to ten minutes just thanking God for that aspect of him and worshiping God that he's my fortress or my refuge or my rock or my strength or whatever it is that day 
I'm like, Lord, I just <coughs> want to focus on you instead of starting my day going, okay, Lord, here's my problems and here's my needs and here's what I've got on my heart. and That's fine. But first, let me just say, God, you're awesome. And let me tell you why. Not that he doesn't know why, but you know what? He likes to hear us tell him why. Amen. Don't you like somebody to tell you, you know, mm -hmm. why you look nice today? Or, you know, why why they appreciate this about you? or that It's nice to hear, mm -hmm. you know? Because you don't want to think it about yourself, because then that makes you egotistical, you know? <laughs> Arrogant, you know? So he's like, I can't think it, but if you want to tell me, that's okay. God wants to hear it. He wants to hear our praise, and, and not just for what he's done, but for who he is. And that's what Moses was trying to do. And God said, you got it. You got it. But the story doesn't end there. Because remember, sin has consequences. God says, I will pardon them. But that does not mean they're getting off the hook, because they've done enough. So next week, Lord willing, we'll talk about their punishment. And I know you already know what it is, but we'll talk about it anyway. <laughs> we'll elaborate. Yes. All right. So let's pray and we'll be dismissed. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings, God. We thank you for the opportunity to be here and to gather today, Lord, to worship you for all you do and for who you are, Lord. I pray that we'll keep in mind this week, Lord, that everything needs to be about you and for you. And that, Lord, we need to approach our lives in a power of prayer. We love you, Lord, and thank you for your many blessings. I pray that you'll bless our services, that your name will be lifted up on high. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, ladies.